Thank you, Fumio. And um, uh, forgive me for not being able to speak Japanese yet. Um, so I hope that you all understand this, the things that I'm making today as sculpture. Um, if we can go to this image of this camera that I made when I was 10 years old for my father. Uh, I describe the strategy here as sympathetic magic, sort of like a voodoo doll. If you, um, if you build it, they will come, or a, a few, a model of your enemies for it, and you burn it down as imagining his demise, or if you pray to a, uh, a model of an ailing limb that's called an ex voto. I built this because my dad couldn't afford a uh, Nikon FM2, and he had to settle for an Olympus OM1. And um, this innocent gesture of love for my father uh, became a strategy that I wound up using later in life to build my own space program, as you'll see. But before that, uh, I made a Chanel guillotine. Uh, it's a full-size guillotine. Um, I think it's a great testament to the um, people of France that this, that its two greatest or most famous exports, Chanel and the guillotine combined together and have landed at the permanent collection of the Pompidou Center. Um, this is probably the best example of another, uh, another important idea of um, cultivating intuition, finding the right, the wrong, the right wrong two things. In other words, um, in school we learn one plus one equals two, but in the studio we learn one plus one equals a million, and that comes through the cultivating of intuition. Um, this is a model of Unité de Habitation in Marseille, the, the, the building designed to solve the post-war housing crisis. Um, it really is another extension of my consumerist greed. I always wanted this building, but I didn't know where to store it, so I made a model of it. And that's also in a museum in the Guggenheim in, in New York. Um, and I made a gigantic boombox because of my love of Jamaican culture and dub music. Dub music, which is in many ways something that became hip hop or, um, or, or punk, um, was synthesized by an artist named Lee Scratch Perry who, who would listen to music over shortwave radio at night in the morning, resynthesize it from memory, um, making his own version, his dub version, not necessarily a fake or a counterfeit, but his own interpretation. Um, McDonald's, of course, um, is this fantastic icon, the true expression of the um, success of modernism. Of course, it's ruining our planet and polluting our bodies, but no one has fed more people while killing fewer people than McDonald's. Um, my consumer greed and lust is not even limited to Earth, but includes the cosmos. So I made my own space program out of plywood. Um, I'm not the only one who has their, his own space program. Jeff Bezos of Amazon and Elon Musk are, are working on their own without the other NASA to go to other worlds. And we don't have time to wait. So my space program is viewed by you, the audience. Um, and we have a lander. This is a full-size lunar lander that I've used on three missions to the moon, to Mars, and most recently to Europa. For today's presentation, I'm just going to kind of smash them all into one. It might be a little confusing, but at least you'll see the objects. And you'll understand that these are all sculptures and that they are all examples of sympathetic magic and my desire to make the world the way I see it. And that is to show how things are made. I paint my wood before I cut it so that you can see I cut it. And so you can see that I am somebody and I was there. This is mission control. This is how we go to Mars or to Europa. We tell the story through 50 monitors and 50 surveillance cameras on cinder blocks and other areas that are controlled by human beings. We see everything, nothing is hidden, everything is transparent because the, I, the fingerprint of the artist is the priority. These are giant speakers that we use to to broadcast the sounds of mission control. In fact, these are the same speakers that Hitler used for his propaganda speeches. I made my own out of plywood, but mine are louder. Um, this is the sound of rockets. 
it sounds like this. <laughs> but deafeningly loud. Um, when our rockets lift off, we use little models that go on tracks, and you can see the famous Apollo liftoff image. Um, this is Mars. It's a ball of red duct, duct tape on a motor. Women's first steps on Mars. Commander Mary Anarino um, and Lieutenant Samantha Ratanarat landing on the surface of Europa here, and they've maybe found this Osama Noguchi from 1980, or maybe they brought it with them, or maybe it was a beacon bringing them there. We were able to borrow this from the Noguchi Museum to show this at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco. There was also a, a Brancusi's The Kiss that acts almost like a Mayan road marker, saying, uh, we're in charge here, don't mess with us. There's a thing called the, um, the prime directive in Star Trek, which means don't mess with other worlds. Or in NASA, they call it the planetary protection protocol. Don't bring bacteria to another, to another land. Um, in the time of the homogenocene, we bring bacteria to other places by accident, on purpose. I'm not gonna miss the opportunity in my space program to speak of who we are as colonialists. Um, our astronauts built their own stupa out of cardboard, but then they cast it into bronze. Somehow they found a foundry on Europa. Um, the Sukubai, where they wash their hands. And then, of course, immediately they start drilling into the surface. This is in the Park Avenue Armory. They're ripping open the, the floor, the 1850 landmark floor. It's easier to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission sometimes. Um, sometimes it's just simpler to use an ax. This is Gonzales Crater, the main excavation site on Mars. Where they've dug the hole, collected a sample, planted seeds, poppy seeds, grown opium poppies, and harvested the opium poppies here we use ivory soap as sopium, um, as synthetic uh, uh, opium latex. We don't want the law to overshadow our achievements on Mars. Um, soap is used, collected in the hand washing ritual that's used in the tea ceremony. This is probably one of the most important objects. This, ch this motorized chasin um, is a way of uh, expediting the process of mastery in making a cup of matcha. They say it takes 5,000 bowls to make one perfect bowl. Of course, this is a Zen aphorism um, saying that you never really get it right. It's just a lifetime of trying and it's the work that is the reward. Um, in America, we slap a motor on it and we get it 80% right on the first try. So I, I show this image because it's an object of great shame. This is a, a tea bowl that I bought on, on Amazon that I engraved with a NASA logo. My ceramic sensei said, how dare you, Tom? You didn't make your own bowl. So I went to ceramic school and I made a bowl did my best I could, and I, I, I got pretty into it. Um, actually became a little obsessed. I'm just gonna show you, I made some more. <laughs> and these tea bowls are made by hand, not on the wheel, by pinch potting, so that you can see my fingerprints, and in 20,000 years, my fingerprints will still be there. Um, but I, I just, I'm not, sorry, I'm running short on time, but I'm just gonna, I made a bunch more. Um, and it continues, of course. Uh, this is the, the dispenser for the sweet in the, in the ceremony. Yoda's head. Yoda's kind of, in, in my view, he's the, like, he's the Jesus of Buddhism. And um, the bonsai tree made in bronze cast of tampons and Q-tips. 
are astronauts on the surface of Europa, scraping the ice, looking for life beneath the surface. Europa is the icy moon of Jupiter, I'm sure all of you know, but it's important to remember that it's got twice the, the water of Earth and is the size of our moon. It's also the smoothest object in the, in the solar system, it's the smoothest object that we know. The other NASA believes that, that there's life, or I should say the other NASA believes our best chance of finding life on another world is on Europa. And we're sending probes there to look at it, but I don't really have time to wait. Um, I need it to happen in my lifetime. There's a sense of urgency. And um, so our astronauts landed four weeks ago on, on Europa. They erected this scaffold. They drilled through the ice, collected water, pulled out their sample return container, which is sort of a miniature laboratory, and they abducted a creature <laughs> that weighed six grams. So, um, Thank you very much.